Hello, Modkit Mayhemers. So we'll be building the Italiari Apache 172. This kit's been sort of running along in the background and I wasn't really sure how I was going to do in terms of, you know, building it. It was just something that'd be interesting and, you know, it's a bit of a modern take rather than sort of World War II. My initial sort of idea was to build it and then paint it with enamels like I did with the Fulmer, but then I realized I've done that and there's not anything really special about this kit. It's in basic green, so well, it wouldn't be very interesting. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, well, why not just do it in acrylics, you know, hand paint acrylics, because I haven't done that yet. And it'd be good learning for me and, and hopefully for you guys. And uh, yeah, just see how I get on. Right, the kits, I'm not sure it's not, it, it looks like an older kit, so I'm not sure when it was originally done. I didn't actually look at the, the year on the actual moulding pin, um, usually the copyright um, the year. So it, it's it's a little bit raggedy, but you can get away with it. You know, it's, um, it's 172 and it's a cheap kit, so pretty much standard build start. You follow the instructions, you know, you build a cockpit. Uh, it's not a lot of detail in there. It's, uh, and in the end, like with the film, I just painted it all black. There was no point going crazy and, and sort of doing individual buttons or anything because it's just the detail's not there for that. Although, having said that, the, the actual glass on the um, Apache is quite big, uh, as you'll see later. So probably on a 1 to 48, it'd be quite good to actually put some really good detail in there because you'd see a lot through the actual cockpit glass usual injector pin marks so you have to fill them and a fair bit of warping on this kit when i put it together it you know i had to sort of put a bit of pressure on there just to try and get them to fit back into where they need to be i don't know if there's any other kits that actually make a 148 apache or even bigger i think um not seen one so i'd be interesting to look at but it'd, it'd make an interesting kit definitely uh, in a bigger scale so then on to the engines fits so so we have to do a bit of filing and a bit of sort of um, scraping with us with a, a scalpel just to get it sort of back to, to fit in. But on the whole, you know, there was no nothing massively major out with this kit. The instructions are a bit strange. Um, I noticed that certain things seem to be opposite. I mean, there was no point worrying about it too much because, again, like I said, it's a budget kit. Yeah, just be aware of that if you if you do buy this kit. To be honest, the, the, the molding's pretty good actually. There, you know. The, the rivets and the and the panel lines and everything are, are, are you know they're, they're not bad at all weapon bays are quite basic but still they look all right you know and i was quite happy with them the rocket pods you have to be careful that you get the rockets lined up properly because i think I, I i was rushing and so i didn't check how they were lined up so when i came to glue on i realized i'd i'd um i'd kind of got the rockets in the wrong sort of angles double check that the, the kind of pods are straight like i said this was a gonna be an ammo painting tutorial so uh i got the old i got the old uh, satin or matte black out and just painted the inside of the, the cockpit quite good because i didn't have to undercoat it i just had to paint it straight on so that's one good thing about enamels but like i have found with the filmer you have to wait 24 hours for the paint to dry which slows down everything so that's why i kind of actually that was my plan while i'm building the film i build it in the background so i don't slow down too much but in the end it, it didn't matter anyway could have undercoated it with a spray black and that would have been fine decided to, to paint the seat cushions in green just to give it a little bit of you know two-tone and then i used a gun metal for the prop rotor shaft and also paint the the can underneath once that was done and it dried probably the next day i fitted it into the actual hull into the actual fuselage and hull fuselage what is it on there fuselage let's go with that and it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah fine if it fine you can see there i've painted either side of that as well because the there's quite a big gap down the side of the actual cockpit area uh, it didn't fit exact so don't know if that's a thing or the way the kit is fuselage sides went together fine uh, you know usual time you're thin hold together and uh, paint down the middle try and line it up as best you can so there's no too much sort of too much of a step on one side it means you can file back less Once it's dried and you know it's solid, use a scalpel blade and just drape along and try and take off the worst of it. But like I said, it, it, it did fit, it, you know, it did fit fine, so there wasn't real issue with that. There was a quite substantial gaps, especially on the tail, and so I had to use some Vallejo filler. Pretty standard stuff, just uh, put some on and flatten it down and fill those holes. 
like I said before in other videos you can use a brush or you can flatten kind of scraper Then onto the wing pylons, they're a little bit loose so you have to make sure that you line them up properly and uh, so you don't get any kind of drop. And the underneath panel, there's a large underneath panel where the cannon mounts to. I'm guessing that's different on different versions, it's updated because I'm not sure why they do it like this. Put the engines on and the kind of intake fan or whatever it is, a filter I think, intake filter, uh, you know, glue that in. Yet yeah, they don't fit great either so you just, you know, just play around them until you're happy. And then the body sort of comes together really. This is a strange thing uh, and I couldn't think of a way around it really was the camera mounts and the infrared and all the sort of sensors at the front. It's inverted so in real life it's the other way around if you look at photos of an Apache and yet at first I thought I was gluing on the wrong way around but actually when you look at the instructions it is according to the instructions that way so I don't know why that is something whether it's a copyright thing where they've changed it so that it's not an exact replica of I don't know what the deal is with that one, so um, it is odd. Uh, and then after that, put the canopy in, and that's really, really tight. And there's, again, there's gaps for that, so you have to do a bit of filling at the front. But uh, yeah, that took a bit of pressure to get that into place. Just a few bits of detail, not exactly sure what these are. See, I filled the actual back part of the helicopter there, a gap there just behind the rotor. So, um, yeah, smooth that down as best you can. To be honest, it goes, the kit goes together really quick once you've painted the inside. It's just a little bit of details then. And rotor blades go together, press them down into the crossbar, and then uh, they seem to be quite solid. After that, it was onto the masking, and to be honest, it was a bit tricky this because the actual glass parts or um, perspire is glass. The, the glass is not well defined, so you have to kind of reference the pictures to make sure you're kind of doing the same shape. It's hard. There's no distinctive edge between the frame and the actual glass, so you kind of, you kind of have to work that one out yourself. So I. I put Tamiya tape down in little sections and just kind of built them up to the overall shape of the actual windows and uh, it, it mostly worked but it takes a long time I mean it probably took longer to do that than half building it <laughs> So if you look at the Apaches, they fade, the, the, the actual olive drab fades substantially, and especially in the nose areas. So I used a green gray to start with, and I painted that on the upper surfaces at the front, rather than just taking olive drab and just painting the whole. I mean, you can do that if you want, but just to give it a bit more um, sort of varied tones and a little bit more depth to the paint job. I, uh, yeah, I painted that on the front and uh, if I remember rightly, it took about sort of two or three coats. I thinned it down with Vallejo thinner, which I haven't done before, rather than you know tap water, just to see how it worked, and it worked worked really well. It dries very very fast, so you have to work with it quite quickly. You know, get a good coat on there, and um, to avoid any kind of watermark lines which you get from painting with acrylic. But to be fair, the the thinner gave me a lot more time to, to work with that so uh, it wasn't so much of a stress than painting it you know near near straight with water as you can see i've just if you, i mean it's good good idea to look at photo references and i collected a lot before this and uh, just wanted something that was a bit more of a worn helicopter so the british helicopters that were out in afghanistan you know they they look really battered and so i thought oh, i'll paint something a bit closer to that rather than just you know boring just standard green and uh, you know just have a little more fun with sort of blending the actual acrylics the undercoat worked really well just good good layer of, of gray And then yeah, top of the top of the tail, 
painted again green grey down on top of that as well so that the sort of the upper areas would be a bit more sun bleached. You don't need much thinner, one or two drops from the actual bottle works fine. Mix it up and then play with it from there. It doesn't dry out anywhere near as fast as usual. Going on to the second coat here, again, green grey over the top. And it's a lot easier the second time and third. You can see how the grey undercoat darkens down the original first coat of the green grey. It makes it substantially darker. So when you do the second coat, it brings it back to the, the lighter colour that you want. If you did one coat, you could leave it just like that and it'd be as close to the olive drab as you'd need it to be. I must admit, I was very much <laughs> winging it. I mean, I literally didn't know how these were going to paint. So it was kind of, it was always a little bit of a worry that you could just ruin it. Like with, I mean, we all get that with every kit. Another good thing to do as well is sort of model it on, like you can see there, and it gives you a bit more extra texture. So just sort of kind of almost like rain streaks, just dot it along and then you get a lighter and, and, and kind of more broken up than just a straight plain color. And uh, that gives you a nice sort of uh, texture. Onto the Vallejo Olive Drab. So pretty much paint that everywhere where you haven't painted the green grey. And I painted up to the line and then I put some thinner on the brush and just thin it out so that it kind of blended and you get a kind of nice effect in front of the stowage wings, paint them as well and then blend it backwards from there. See, I'm using a, another brush that's coated in, in thinner. So don't use the brush that you're painting with and then just blend it in between the two like that. Now you'll need to do this a couple of times because it does leave a certain amount of a kind of tidal mark. Um, but the second time you do it, you, you don't see it. It, becomes, um, it just blends in even more every time you do it. Don't expect it the first time because you'll just see a slight slight watermark as it were. And um, But it's that's fine, personally fine. It, you know, don't, don't panic there. So I'd masked the canopy and I have noticed when I've done this before that sometimes paint, especially when hand painting it, it's not so much with an airbrush, but when you're hand painting it, it seeps under the actual masking. And so if you are going to paint it, make sure you try and paint with very hardly any thinner. So it's as under diluted as possible with, a, with, with the original paint. And then it's less likely to seep under there, but it, it does, unfortunately. And um, I still haven't found a way around that yet. Right, onto the rotors. And I used not a straight black, I thought I'd use the tire black. It's a really good, very dark gray with a hint of a red to it, slightly warmer kind of color to it. And um, that worked perfect for the rotors and the tires. And then once I've done that, got some rust, because if you look at, the, like I said, the helicopters from Afghanistan, the tails almost go into like a brown kind of tint. So I um, I used some orangey red and painted that on in between the rotor axle ridge that we're on the sides and used, you know, a bit of detail with that. And that gives it a nice tone and breaks up the green a bit. And then I went on and I took some olive drab and I mixed a little amount of tire black with it to make it darker. And then I went around the areas where the paint's rubbed from people climbing up and down of it. If you look at the photos, you'll see where crew members have climbed up on the side and scuffed it with their boots or uh, whatever they're, they're sort of putting in there. And you can see, you know, it's very obvious where the most wear is and just try and emulate that with your painting. And I, I kind of blended that in and weathered it using the darker green and uh, it looked really good and the top areas keep them as clean as possible on the nose but around where they climb in that goes goes darker and also where they've maintained the engine and sort of around those areas there's a lot more wear there so it's again the paint's a lot darker in those in those areas it gives it a lot more depth than if you just left it you know you could just paint it all green and that'd be fine you know if, if you're happy with that that's great but for a little bit of extra work and um, you know a, a little tad drop of you know black gray you could build up the depth of paint immensely there's so many different ways you could do it, but this this worked for me. I mean, looking at that, it looks like a 148 kit, but you're 172. It's quite fine. Uh, and after you're happy with that, then I went on and got some 
orange rust. If you look at the photos, you'll see it's mostly on the edges of panels, never in the middle. It's always just on the edge where it can collect. So that gives it realistic if you do that way and blend it out with again thinner. I also painted the exhaust nozzles with the tire black. They have a little bit of rust around them as well, so you can put a little bit of rust on the edge. Went back with the, some more dark green and built up more darker areas. There's actually more tire black in this paint mix of olive drab and black. And um, yeah, it's almost, almost kind of like a wash but down some darker areas where it's worn and dirty. So then it was on to some transfers. There's not a lot that you have anyway, but um, in the end, I just went with the, the roundels. And if you look at the helicopter serving, well, you can't see anything else other than the roundels, the red on the roundels. I used some um, the standard transfer solutions from Vallejo and then I varnished some satin. I hand painted that on and it worked fine. I think three coats then allowed me to do um, the wash. And then once I sort of was happy with that, I pulled off the mask with trepidation. <laughs> I'm really hoping that they worked. Uh, I wasn't sure how bad it was going to seep underneath and uh, it wasn't too bad in the end. It's something, I think I've said this in a video before, very satisfying about pulling masks away. And there they are. You can see that some where it's seeped slightly up underneath, just slightly. Generally it's okay, but like I did with the Fulmer, take a soft piece of wood, a cocktail stick or a barbecue stick in my case, and then just dip it in a bit, a bit thinner and, and just rub away the, the areas that have kind of seeped under. And generally it comes away. Uh, you can even, which I was, what I did was use a brush with some thinner and just clean the glass with that. It just gets a lot of the uh, sort of last residues away. It looks a lot tidier. I think um, like on a 1 to 48, it would be much nicer to have one where the frame is separate and then you glue the windows into it and that would be a lot more, it would be a lot tidier than just one piece like this is. I can see why they've done it for 172, it's fine, but it's, um, it's very hard to just sort of define the edges. There's not a colossal amount of detail there either, so it's quite a plain canopy. It's such a big piece of the actual, you know, a helicopter would be nice to have a bit more detail there. Like I said, it's such a big canopy, so you really kind of do notice it on the aircraft and uh, you've got to kind of get make it as right as you possibly can. So once I was happy with that, I went on to some washes and I took some dark grey wash, Vallejo dark grey wash, and just like I watered it down uh, so it wasn't super, super black. Because you don't want the pellet to go too dark and do it and sort of do all those works that you've done in tone. And then I also used a brown wash for the tail. It's this first kit I've done where I've used exclusively Vallejo paints. I've always mixed it up with other products before. So it was quite nice to use just one and uh, you know see how far I can get with that. So I'll, I'll be definitely doing another like this. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do yet, but uh, I did really enjoy it. It was, it was quite good fun and, and the results were great. You know, uh, I mean, I've got to go back to airbrushing again soon, but 172 kit where you can just paint it quick as this, not a problem, it's quite good fun. Worth doing if you can, give it a go, you know, a bit of thinner and the paint, you can do quite a bit of facts with that. So there was one thing I did change when I was building this kit. I noticed that the British helicopters had external tank and um, I had a tank that was spare from a Hunter kit. So I built that up and put that on uh, instead of a, another rocket just to give it a bit more interest so it's kind of a little bit of a conversion it's in the name mod kit mayhem so I modified the kit and uh, yeah it just gave it a nice extra detail glued the rotor on that went on fine not a problem be very careful you don't snap it and then the tail fine no problem bit of super glue and then glue the gun on underneath bit of super glue on that that's painted silver 
And there we have it, an Apache. Uh, it went together really well considering, you know, there was nothing out of the ordinary in terms of kit. And uh, the one thing I did find was when it came to sort of taking pictures of it at the end, man, that's a hard thing to take a photo of. <laughs> it's got a really long tail. So when you take a photo from the back, it's really odd and there's no way of getting around it. And I haven't got a zoom on my camera because I use an iPhone. It, it, if you, you lose a lot of quality, you zoom in. So I try not to I maybe go up to 1.3 max zoom. After that, you start getting a lot of noise. So it was an effort to get good shots of it. And also I noticed sitting on the ground, it looked terrible. So I stuck it on a little uh, white clip that I could Photoshop out and just made it look like it was hovering a bit. And that, that worked, made it look more, look, the, the posters a lot more cooler. So I was really happy with that. And um, and there we have it. I hope you liked the video. I'm sorry it's been, it's been a bit sporadic recently. My work, I'm, I'm having to start looking for work again and life's changed a bit. So I can't do the weekly videos like I used to. And from now I'm going to have to just do it as and when. Um, my goal with this was to always make 30 videos and see if I could get to a thousand subscribers. You know, I got halfway there. But and thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, and so I've got one more video left to do, which I thought I'd do a kind of roundup. Uh, and I'm not sure when that'll come out, but a few weeks I'll, I'll put it together and try and cover everything that I've done up to now and then maybe cover some ideas I've got for the next videos that I want to do. And uh, and, and that's it really. Um, I, I, I just going to keep going and just do what I can when I can and spare moments to do some actual modeling. I'll put videos together and try and make some interesting stuff. The one good thing with this is the fact that I'll be able to put a bit more time into the actual building. When I'm doing on a week deadline, I have to cut corners in some ways. I can't spend as much time on the model and paint it because I have to edit it and put it all together. And that, that really takes a lot of time. And sometimes it's just, it's a hell of a lot of work. And um, this way I'll be able to spend a bit more time and just make it a little bit more interesting. And I've always wanted to animate some of the characters and, you know, take it to the next level. So I'm hoping with the next video, I'll, um, I'll be able to step up the production value and just make them how I wanted them originally. Uh, and with that, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got something from it. And, uh, you know, painting with acrylics, a good way of doing it cover everything now uh like and subscribe below if you can that would be fab it really helps out and uh keep pushing towards that thousand subscribers that's what my goal is that would be really amazing if i can get there and uh any ideas if you, you know you want me to do something leave it in the comments below please feel free to comment because it's great when i interact with you guys you know it makes my day even if it's just thank you it means a lot and uh yeah take care thanks very much for watching cheers now Tara. bye